What's going on guys? This video is a scouting tutorial for NHL 24. I get a lot of questions about how to scout in this game, the best way to scout, how to find draft steals. Obviously, first thing we're gonna do here, go to team management, trade and improve, assign scout. That's where you know this entire video is gonna happen. Uh, sort your scouts by type. If you have Fog of War turned off, get rid of all of your pro scouts. You do not need them at all, so go through and fire them all. If you have Fog of War turned on, I would keep four scouts. Um, personally though, in this case, like the game gave me a bunch of trash scouts. You guys can see there the overalls. Uh, most of them in the D's, one C minus. In this case, honestly, just fire all of them and restart. Now, after firing all of my pro scouts, I'm only left with amateur scouts. I'm gonna sort here by region. Basically, I'm only gonna keep scouts that are above a C overall. So I got two A's here, which is actually super lucky. Uh, USA East and Central. A lot of times, too, the game doesn't even put them in their best spot. So definitely uh, click your right stick in and check. For instance, Almond here has an A in both the USA West and Central, but a B minus in the East, which is where they had them. So I'll definitely be switching him. Uh, freezing here is an A in the central, but he's an A plus in the E. So again, make sure you check the scouts that you already have and see if they're actually in their best spot. Um, also, Ballard down here is a B minus. B minus in the WHL. That's actually his best one. Now, uh, B scouts are hard to find, so honestly, I would still be keeping him, but um, all the scouts here that have a C or lower, I'm gonna delete, unless they are A plus in a region we want. So, Tepperani in here, for instance, A plus in Russia, and Ranger already A plus in OHL. So after going through, finding all the scouts I don't want, I'm only left with five scouts here. Uh, Freezing, I actually still have to change the region on. I just wanted to show you guys um, the best way to do this. Obviously, we know he'll be in the US, and the good thing is this game actually shows you what his accuracy is in each region on the map screen, so you can see uh, the west there it's an a central it's an a the east though it's an a plus so you don't have to remember that which is obviously a nice little bit of help there so as you guys can see here's the five scouts we have now because i have fog of war turned off i'm gonna be hiring 20 amateur scouts if you guys do play with fog of war though i'll show you what to do in that case later on uh, for right now though i'll show you the region breakdown so basically i can ch click change region here i'm not actually gonna do it but it kind of shows you guys how many players are in each spot so uh you go to the chl here obviously tons and tons of players like look at that 200 uh, 166 forwards almost 200 forwards. So you want two scouts in each of the CHL regions. Pretty self-explanatory because there are so many players there. Um, next up, you also want two scouts in each of the US regions. So two in the US West, two in the US Central, and then two in the US East. So if you guys are good at math, we're already up to 12 scouts. Uh, next, you're gonna go over to Europe. You're gonna want to scout in the Dell League. This, of course, is the German League. Also an extra league, which of course is the Czech League. You're not 14. Uh, you also want to have two scouts in Russia. Again, you can see there, 50 forwards, 25 defensemen, a lot of players there as well. We're now up to 16. And then finally, in the Nordic region, you're gonna want to have two scouts in the SHL. Again, because there's so many players and two scouts in Liga. Uh, you might be wondering, you know, why don't I put three scouts in uh, each of the CHL regions because there are so many players there. Well, at that point, you're kind of missing out on some of the leagues and two scouts, you know, should be enough to kind of find what you need. And so now that we're on the higher scout page, guys, we're looking for scouts that have an A plus accuracy in all the regions we want. At the bottom there, you can actually see where we already have scouts. Unfortunately, for like the US, it doesn't show which regions they're in. So you kind of have to remember, I know we have one in the central, one in the east. So uh, we'll just go through here, honestly, by the regions. It makes it the most easy. Um, in terms of the salary too, even with owner mode turned on, usually you can afford to hire all your scouts. So uh, you can see there, Russia was only an A. Looking for an A plus Russia. There we go. Ballet, overall is a C. You really don't want anything less than a C minus. Also too, in terms of the salary offered, I feel like you can usually get them for five to 10K less, but no more than that. So if you wanna just offer like 5K less on everyone, you should be okay. So there's our second Russia scout. We're good there. We actually need two SHL and two Liga scouts now. Uh, this first guy, A-plus in the Liga, so that's one. Terra Vinans, A-plus SHL, so that's two. Another A-plus Liga, another A-plus SHL. So there's our four Nordic scouts. Now next year, you guys looking at Europe. As I mentioned, we want one scout in the Dell and one in the Czech League. This first guy is actually an A-plus in both. So uh, quite versatile there. Can use him for either one. I uh, will keep looking through. This guy here is also an A-plus in both. So that just makes it nice and easy. I'm sure the game will put like them both in the same region. Where the game decides to put your scouts is honestly so terrible. So that's something you definitely got to keep an eye on. And now next year in terms of the US region, again, it shows at the bottom two US. You got to remember the regions, one central, one east. Now this first guy here is an A-plus in the east. So uh, we just need one central, two west. Uh, we keep looking through. There's our second central. There's one of the West, there's two of the West, US is done. And finally here guys, in regards to the CHL, we need two Q scouts, one OHL scout, and one WHL scout. So first here, look at the QMJHL. Again, we're looking for A plus in that region. We get one there with Gibson, and we're gonna keep going through. We get one there with Cooper. Make sure he's not, you know, below a C minus. He's not, we're good to go. Doing the same thing now in the OHL, this first scout had an A plus there, plus the WHL in case uh, we can't find one, but we only need one WHL scout with the A plus. The first guy there, Thibaut's good. 
uh, not asking for too much money either. So there we have it guys, made offers on all the scouts. I should mention too, I don't think I went over it well enough. If you're wondering, why did I keep Ballard? He's only a B minus in the WHL region. Well, the reason is C scouts are super easy to find, but scouts that are B and higher are not. With him being a B minus overall, as he kind of scouts the WHL over time, he'll actually increase his accuracy in that region, eventually being an A+, plus while also being a better scout. And after seeing forward a few days, guys, you can see all the scouts accepted our offers. Again, as long as you don't offer them less than, you know, 10K what they're asking for, they will say yes. You might notice though in the bottom right, we're actually 400K or so above what our scouting salary should be. Again, with owner mode turned off, it does not matter. But if we were playing with owner mode, basically, we might have to change out this A scout here is making 250K for, you know, someone with A plus in a region that's only making 100K. So 150K saved there. And then also too, a lot of these guys just offered what they're asking for. If you actually offer 10K less for everybody, those two changes alone would probably have you under the salary max. Now, the reason I want to show this to you guys is definitely after they all say yes, don't just think they're where you want them to be. As you can see, the game has like no logic in terms of like where to put your scouts. Uh, we've got three in the central, only one in the east. We've got a guy in the ice, which we don't need. we got four in SHL, none in Liga, even though I'm sure like Ekman here, let's check. Yeah, he's an A plus in Liga. How the game decides where they put your scouts, I have no idea. And now I just finished moving around all my scouts. This is what it should look like for you as well when you're done. As you can see there, we got two A plus in Russia, two A plus in Liga, same with SHL, one extra Liga, one Dell. Two in the East, two in the Central, the one A against because he's an A minus overall. Uh, two in the West, two in the Q, two in the OHL, two in the WHL. Again, the B minus is because he's a B minus overall. So that's what your scouting page should look like when you're all done. Now, I mentioned earlier, if you're playing with Fog of War turned on, this is going to be a little bit different. I would add four pro scouts in that case. I would take one amateur scout out of Russia. I would take one out of Liga. Then I would take one out of USA East and one at USA West. So uh, that'll leave you with four spots. Now for these four scouts, I would actually sort it by overall as they're actually gonna be moving around. So this first guy, for instance, a lot of B's and A's, both NHL and AHL, he'd be a good candidate. Third guy's not too bad. Fourth guy's got the one C. Um, so try and avoid C's if you can. Like this guy here, for instance, Howard, all B's and A's. Now the reason you wanna make sure they have A's and B's about the NHL and AHL is because for the first 30 games of the season, they'll be in the NHL. You're gonna have one scout in each division. So one in the Pacific, one in the Central, one in the Atlantic, and one in the Metro. Then after those first 30 or so games, you're gonna move all four of those scouts to AHL. Again, one in each division. You're gonna have one in the Pacific, one in the Central, one in the North, and one in the Atlantic. Now the reason for this is that way you've actually scouted all four divisions in both leagues by the trade deadline. So whether you're training for a player in the NHL or the AHL, you hopefully have some information on them. After that, I would say if you're a rebuilding team, just leave them in the AHL. That way, when you're at the draft and in the summer, you have a better idea of the prospects you're looking at. But if you're a contending team, leave them in the NHL, and that way you have a better idea of like actual NHL players you're trying to acquire at the draft or in the summer to make another run at the cup. Now, once you guys have that all set up, you're ready to send to the draft. There is one more thing you can do if you choose though. It's quite time consuming and tedious. I'll show you guys here. So take this Russian scout. Uh, we're gonna go to scout specific players. Rather than letting the game just kind of automatically decide how to scout. So right now you can see, looking at potential in comparison for all these players, you can click on a guy you're interested in and actually choose what you wanna scout, whether it be playing style, strength and weaknesses, skill assessment, character assessment, or potential and comparison. This obviously is the most important one because you're seeing what the player's potential is. That matters more than anything else. Uh, you could also look at like strengths and weaknesses though, if you're curious, playing style to see whether or not he's a playmaker, a grinder, um, even skill assessment here too. Obviously though, potential is the most important and you have to go through and do this for every single player, which again, takes a lot of time. So if you do want to do this, you can spend a bit of time looking at like the playing style, strength and weaknesses, etc. But uh, make sure you spend the majority of your time finding out what that potential is. Look at this guys, draft layers all just came in. Definitely the darkest timeline. Ottawa jumps from seven to one with the Detroit pick. Real life, uh, that could not happen, but uh, that's kind of funny to see. But we'll get to the draft now. As you guys can see there, the Edmonton Oilers actually won the Stanley Cup. I just thought that draft lottery was way too funny not to show. And actually guys, one more thing I forgot to mention earlier. At the end of the season here, you see this big coach retirement screen, bunch of coaches to retire. As far as I know, scouts can't retire. So basically all those scouts we hired at the beginning of the season, we could keep throughout our entire franchise, which is obviously a really nice thing is obviously it takes a bit of time to like set that all up, probably like 20 minutes or so. And you don't have to worry about, you know, constantly redoing it with scouts retiring. So it's definitely a big plus. Also too, every year some players become scouts, plus, you know, teams will let go of scouts for their reason. So after the draft, I'll show you guys why it's good to check the new scouts every summer. Finally here guys, the moment of truth, we're at the NHL entry draft. We'll take a look at the draft class and see how our scouts did. I mean, all the top players that are scouted, which is nice to see. Uh, Gems, you got Martinson there, who I'm like 99% sure is made up, never heard of him. Uh, Love Shinov as well. So I guess first things first, you'd kind of sort by Gems, see which ones we got. Are you kidding me? We got a couple potential steals. Steve Weaver there, number 13. Guaranteed medium elite. Guaranteed medium elite player at 13 is very good value. Uh, you also got this guaranteed medium elite goalie. 
He's gonna go somewhere in like the late third round. Always awesome to find these. For some reason, it seems to be way easier for scouts to find mainly league goalies than skaters. I don't know what it is, but you can always get a lot of value there. And that's of course just looking at our gems. We'll sort by potential now. Celebrini, of course, guaranteed high elite. There's some guys here that could be high elite. Um, a lot of them I don't think are just because they're, you know, real players. And I know that for a fact. Uh, Nikita Artemov there. I don't know if he is real or not, but you know, maybe uh, he's a high elite. Now look at the medium leads here. Do we have any other guaranteed medium elite players? They're going to go later in the draft. Um, this guy could be medium elite, late first rounder. Really not the best value. We want like, you know, three bars there. That's going to go third or fourth round. Unfortunately, we don't get it. But of course, we got the guaranteed goalie. So we're going to be pretty happy. We also got Max Plant here who could be high top six going early second round. You guys might notice I actually use the Coyotes for this video because they have so many picks. So hopefully can find some steals. Swanson as well, early second. Guaranteed medium top six. Right here is an absolute steal. Mitchell, Palachik, guaranteed medium top four defense. We're going to go in like the fourth or fifth round. Um, even Crab above him, guaranteed medium top four. Going to go in the second round. And our first pick here, guys, is actually 10th overall. So uh, we'll just kind of quickly do the draft. At this point, Berkeley Catton, I think, is medium elite. But let's just say he wasn't. We'll take Weaver here, who is a gem, guaranteed medium elite. 82 overall to the draft. So that's why scouting matters. Look at how much better he is. Honestly, he might be better than Celebrini. Uh, yeah, he's higher rated than Celebrini out of the draft. He's a created player. Celebrini does have that potential, but um, I mean, a number 10 there. Weaver, what a pick. Um, next year, guys, we'll sim to our next one. Pick 38. We'll see kind of what damage we can do. Then you got Artemanov here, who could be high elite. One thing I like to look for is NHL ETA. So Artemanov there, two years. That's usually kind of like my tiebreaker. I can't decide between a guy. Uh, Plant here is also two years. At that point, Artemanov has a slightly higher potential. So uh, we'll go with him. We'll see what happens. And he's at 67 high top nine. So pick could have been better, but not terrible. Plant actually just went. He was also a high top nine there at 68. So almost identical players. And after that, guys, our next pick here is going to be this Paul Crab, who's a guaranteed medium top four. And as you can see, he's 78 overall to the draft. Oh my goodness. I didn't even take a look at his NHL ETA. He must have been NHL ready. Stick him up, X Factor. That is a steal in the second round. And I forgot to mention while recording the video, guys, if you're up to pick and you're trying to decide between a couple players, if there's a chance one has an X Factor, usually lean that way. Even if he doesn't have it, he should be the better player overall. Keep that in mind. And we're still in the second round here, guys. If we look at our pins here, we got a guaranteed medium league goalie, guaranteed medium top four defenseman, but uh, they're not getting taken for a little bit. So at this point, we're just kind of looking for value. And sorting it by potential, you got Vinny here, who could be medium lead, and he's supposed to go within the next, you know, five or so picks. So we'll take a chance on him. Look at that, 66 overall medium league goalie. Uh, this draft so far, we are crushing. And on next year, guys, we actually have an early third round pick. Honestly, at 74, if there's no one really jumping out to me, we could take that guy who's supposed to go at like 90 because this isn't too much earlier. Zarkov here. Ooh, we might've just found a steal. Zarkov, NHL ready, guaranteed. The melee potential is like, you know, two or four bars. Let's take a chance on Zarkov. Don't tell me. Medium top six, but he's a 77 already. Like that is such a good pick in the third round. Our next pick here guys is at 92. So we should still be able to get that medium league goalie. I'm pretty sure he was supposed to go like 96 or something. Uh, yeah, Boro here, 97, 98. So. Uh, this is definitely a draft for the ages. Very happy with how this turned out for the video. Um, next year at 96, last pick in the third round. Honestly, uh, we could just take like the medium top four defenseman. He's not supposed to go for a little bit, but uh, make sure we get him. And as you can see there, he's only a 46 overall, but still a medium top four potential. End of the third round is amazing value. So I'll send our next pick. At this point, I've got nobody pinned. So uh, I guess when you guys are drafting, you know, you're taking chances. You could go for, say, like a guaranteed medium top nine forward guarantee medium top six defenseman you know it's a decent player that might eventually be like in your bomb six as a forward or bomb pairing defenseman but you could also take a chance i personally prefer to take a chance as you can easily find those kind of lower end players in free agency where elite players a lot harder to find so why not take a chance noakes ends up being a medium top nine anyways but he could have been even better so that's kind of why i usually prefer to you know take the chance on guys take those swings sorting it by potential here no longer is anyone that has a decent chance of being medium leap but um, there's this guy here, could be low elite. Um, let's take a chance. Moaning in there, finish, low top six. So again, we're not always going to hit, but I do think it makes sense to swing for the fences. Now right here, we've got Samuel Sanderson, guaranteed low top four. I feel like that's really good value getting him in the fifth round. He's only 48 overall, which is whatever. Honestly, with our last couple of picks, I'll probably just take the guys that have like the one bar there for medium elite. It's, it's whatever. Um, I think we should be able to take both of them. So Petrovicki, He's a seventh defenseman. Again, the reason why it's one bar, the chance of him being medium elite, especially going this late, is slim to none, but I've seen it happen before. Like, there is a chance. Soliavov here, I probably butchered his name, also seventh defenseman. We got one more pick. 
I think there was a guy I saw that could be medium top six. I want to say too, this is like the second last pick of the draft. So he's gone, but Philip is still there. Could be medium top four and he's a medium seven. So again, when you have a lot of picks, you can afford to kind of take chances. At the end of that draft, we didn't really find too many, you know, crazy players, but I feel like that first half, we absolutely crushed it. And now that we're in the summit here, guys, the last thing we want to do is take a look and see if there's any new scouts available that are above a C overall. If there is, we definitely want to get them. Uh, whatever, like, their best region is, we'll take over for a guy we currently have who's a C. So, sorry, my overall here. Does not look to be any uh, new scouts worth hiring. Again, we're looking for, like, a B- minus or better. This first summer, there aren't any available, but eventually there will be. So, just make sure every summer you check for that. Other than that, I feel like that's it for the video. I didn't want to make it too long. I want to try to make it, you know, pretty easy for you guys. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments section. If this video helped you out, leave that thumbs up. If you guys have not subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below for more franchise videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.